Hey guys, it's week four of Camp NaNoWriMo 2019 already, and it's time to take my writing on the run. So on today's episode of The Story Detective, we're taking a trip back in time. Not physically, but mentally, as we do this week's Camp Nano vlog in a library that was built in the 19th century. The Stone Ridge Library in Stone Ridge, New York was built by John Lounsbury in 1798. It was purchased by the Hasbrook family in 1859, whose daughter gave it to the community to be used as a library in 1909. Standing here 110 years later, it's where I'll be concluding my week 4 Camp Nano vlog, doing some writing sprints, and in between giving you a tour of this historic monument to the history of literacy and discussing some of its history. The fireplaces and woodwork are from the original construction. Fireplaces and wood stoves were the only source of heat, and winters in those days were often brutal. Snowfalls were more consistent then, often with no relief until spring. Four to six feet of snow was not unheard of, with no way to plow except using horses. Considering the nearest city, Kingston, is about 20 minutes by modern car on paved roads, you can imagine what it would be like with a horse and buggy. During bad weather, you could be trapped there for days, and if there happened to be an emergency during such a time, it was unlikely you would get out of the village, or that help would arrive. This was the world in which Garrett and Julia Hasbrook found themselves when they moved from New York City in 1861. The reason for their move was some type of financial difficulties, and while New York City was not exactly the mecca we see today, it would still have been an extreme change for the Hasbrooks compared to the small village of Stone Ridge. I'm set to write here, setting up my earbuds, which they certainly didn't have in the 1800s. So this is going to be interesting. My weekly Camp Nano update. Two of my cabin mates, Kayla Canoe and CO Savvy, have reached their goals. Congrats, guys. I have nearly 7,000 words to go and hope to get at least 2,000 done by the end of the day. Between filming and research, I don't know if I'll be getting the three or 4,000 that I got the past couple of weeks. Right now, my mind is a bit preoccupied by what life may have been like in these rooms over a century ago. As a writer, I feel like a part of myself is isolated within a foreign landscape whenever I'm working on a project. Life is just a mirror for writing, and vice versa. Most people's idea of New York is skyscrapers and city blocks. But the truth is, that only comprises a few miles within the state. Most of it is dairy farms, or used to be. New York was the third largest dairy producers in the country. From the late 90s to the early 2000s, however, their numbers fell sharply as large agricultural farms took over and shut out, then bought out local farmers. Aside from dairy farms, the Hudson Valley has three mini mountain ranges, the Taconic, Marlboro, and Ramapo Mountains. Their beauty and serenity has captured the imagination of such writers as Washington Irving, Joshua Ferris, and Carol Goodwin. To this day, it can still snow in the Hudson Valley when the surrounding areas may get no accumulation at all. So looking back at the worst winters in the 1800s, this area would have probably been one of the worst snowfall areas in the state. Julia kept a diary. I believe 10 volumes were found and now are a part of the local historical society. Most women of her station kept diaries during that time. Most of her entries were concerns about health and her children. Would there have been a doctor or nurse in a village as small as Stone Ridge? Probably there was someone, but Julia's constant concern makes me wonder if she had any real faith in them. Maybe it was simply the isolation which frightened her. I've tried to imagine what her life was like. Kingston is only 12 miles away, but by horse and carriage, that was not a short drive. The fact that I'm writing a period story now is really no coincidence. 
History plays an important role in all of our writing, both personal and world history. During any period, it's important to remember what's happening in the world around our characters affects their outlook on life, and human nature is such that there's always something unpleasant going on. For the Hasbrooks, it was the Civil War. Life is always a balance between the great and the terrible. Your characters don't or shouldn't live in a vacuum. Under the best of conditions, a horse can trot pulling two people in a carriage at a maximum speed of 15 miles per hour, a speed which can only be maintained for 20 minutes. Then the horse has to walk for at least 15 minutes before the trotting can resume. On a paved road, that would take approximately an hour and 10 minutes to get to Kingston. On a dirt road, that time might be doubled. In bad weather conditions, however, a horse might travel only 60 feet in an hour. The average parent often goes through hell with small children during the winter months. Imagine a time when 12 miles might mean life or death. My time at the library was an amazing experience. For my writing, however, I barely got halfway to my goal. I went home and signed into the campsite and did a series of sprints with CO to finish my quota. My word count for the day was 2,254 words, which put me at 44,000 400 words total. That means I have 4,600 words to finish. Julia did manage to raise two healthy sons, only to have them killed in the Civil War. She also had a daughter, also named Julia, who donated her childhood home to the community in 1909 to be used as a library in memory of her parents. The Hasbrook legacy lives on to this day. As writers, I think we all think about the sort of legacy we'd like to leave behind. And yet, our stories are built upon everything that has come before us. Ideas come from the ghosts trapped within our walls, the lessons in the ashes, memories carved in stone, and even the history of the dirt beneath our feet. If life is the great teacher, then writers are excavators of the truth. Always observing and never bored. Our keyboards compose the tales of yesterday's sorrows and tomorrow's promise as we stitch facts and whole cloth together seamlessly, for such is the stuff of legends. If you're enjoying these videos, please consider subscribing. And until next time, remember that famous Sherlock Holmes quote that says, don't just see the world, but observe it. Because the details not only hold the beauty of life, but all the best stories as well, and they're just waiting to be discovered.